हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू ए न्यू सेशन ऑन डेंटिस्ट्री एंड मोर टुडे टॉपिक इन ऑरल पैथोलॉजी इज पिम्फिकस वलगैरिस एंड बुलस पिम्फिगॉइड द नेम्स आर लिटिल बिट सेम बट देर इज लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंस बिटवीन दीज टू ऑटो इम्यून ब्लिस्टर फॉर्मेशन स्किन डिजीज एंड अलोंग विद दैट वील बी लर्निंग वॉट इज निकॉल्सकी साइन एंड वॉट इज शैंक टेस्ट और शैंक सेल सो लेट सी the basic differences between pemphigus vulgaris and bullous pemphigoid so what is the fundamental difference between pemphigus and pemphigoid there are lots of differences between these two skin diseases the common thing is these both are autoimmune diseases we know what is autoimmune diseases our own antibodies acting against our own cell and causing destruction in one way or other so pemphigus and pemphigoid both are autoimmune antibodies but the mechanism of blister formation is different in pemphigus it is intradermal blister formation we'll go into detail later now let's see what is intradermal it is like the acantholysis that is the detachment of cells that is a cell adhesion is lost between the cell layers that is between the epithelial layers so the basal layer is intact here the basal layer is intact here so it is forming within the epithelium that is intradermal blister formation so it is forming within the epithelium but in pemphigoid the epithelium is not affected you can see the basal layer is here and all the other layers are here there is no much problem in within the epidermis but the problem is the epidermis and the basal membrane so it is sub epidermal this is intra epidermal blister formation this is sub epidermal blister formation so that is the unique difference between these two so this is forming within the epidermis this is underneath the epidermis that is between the basal membrane and epithelium so that is the difference between pemphigus and pemphigoid now let's see the other differences the pemphigus vulgaris which is seen common in younger patient but whereas the bullous pemphigoid it is high incidence seen in elder age group and this is mucosal involvement is very common and oral lesions but in pemphigoid the mucosal involvement is very rare and there is no oral lesions because it is a very deeper lesions because as shown here so if you know this concept explaining these differences is very much easier because mucosal involvement is very common because it is the intra epidermal epidermal problem or blister formation this is sub epidermal so this will be definitely in a very deeper location so mucosal involvement will be common in pemphigus pemphigoid it will be very rare so the antibodies so i said it is a auto immune system so auto antibodies working against our own cells so antibodies are acting against desmoglein tree so you can see here the antibodies causing separation of these cells that is it affects desmoglein tree desmoglein tree are the keratin fibers or the fibers which connects the cells so it affects desmoglein tree so it separates the cells and forming this blisters whereas this is acting against hemidesmosome hemidesmosomes are structures which keeping the basal membrane and epithelium close together so it acts here between hemidesmosome attachment that is between the basal membrane and epithelium so the pemphigus is intra epidermal blisters that is superficial so i explained you in detail that is intra epidermal 
whereas the subepidermal deep blisters are seen in pemphigoid this is deep blisters and subepidermal that is underneath of epidermis this is intraepidermal the blisters are flaccid and rupture very easily because it is superficial this is very tense and firm because it has a thick layer of epidermis over the blister but here the layer is not very concrete so very firm so it is easily rupturable the pemphigus so that's why i was saying if you know this concept it is very easy to understand nikolsky sign is positive and nikolsky sign is negative so let's see what is exactly nikolsky sign it was uh, put forward by a scientist nikolsky the thing is when we apply lateral pressure so when we apply lateral pressure or a shearing force the skin ruptures that is nikolsky sign so when it ruptures when there is a superficial blister or a intraepidermal blister formation or intraepidermal acantholysis is there there will be nikolsky sign so it is most commonly seen in pemphigus vulgaris and it will not be seen in bullous pemphigoid because it is a very deeper lesion it has a thick epidermis above the blister so if you apply lateral pressure or shearing force there will not be any loss of or any rupture of the superficial skin so that is nikolsky sign it is to identify the intra versus sub epidermal blisters so nikolsky sign which is seen in pemphigus vulgaris and also it is seen in stephen johnson syndrome so it is uh, nothing but a significant indicator of active acantholysis and altered structural integrity within the epidermis so which allows a physician to determine the level of split in the skin so as to distinguish between intraepidermal and subepidermal blistering diseases in the clinical setting that is the importance of nikolsky sign so these are nikolsky sign positive skin lesions so that is nikolsky sign when we apply lateral pressure or shearing force there will be rupture and the acantholysis is seen on chang smear and it is not seen on chang smear so acantholysis is nothing but the loss of detachment or loss of the intradermal connection so if the intradermal connections or intra epidermal connections is lost that is known as acantholysis that the acanthosis is lost acanthosis is a cell to cell connection so that is lost so when we take a smear we can see chang cell chang cell is nothing but a multi nucleated giant cell fusion of the acantholytic keratinocytes so when there is acanthosis happening so these acantholytic keratinocytes will coalesce to form a multi nucleated giant cell which is known as chang cell these cells will be observed in uh, testing that is uh, staining and we can Uh, keep it as a positive sign for superficial lesions that is pemphigus vulgaris so chang test uh is so positive in all these conditions and one more thing is the prognosis the prognosis for pemphigus vulgaris is poor but whereas the bullous pemphigoid is a uh, good prognosis the patient's recovery is very good with bullous pemphigoid and the tombstone appearance is seen with pemphigus vulgaris you can see the tombstone appearance of the basal membrane so this is the tombstone appearance is just the stone we keep for uh, graveyard so that a uh, collection of tombstone you can see in pemphigus but that is not very visible here because there is no intra epithelial or intra dermal separation so here it is basement membrane is separated here the intradermal separation is there so we can very clearly see in the tombstone appearance in pemphigus so while coming to immunofluorescence 
So in pemphigus vulgaris, we have net like IgG, whereas in the bullous pemphigoid, we have linear IgG structures. So that is all about pemphigus vulgaris and bullous pemphigoid. So it is uh, the difference, uh, as I mentioned, it is the intradermal and subepidermal. So you understand this concept clear, then you apply this into the differences. It is very easy to understand and learn about Nikolsky sign and Chang test or Shang cell. So it is very commonly asked what is Nikolsky sign and uh, Chang test or Chang cells and also the tombstone appearance tombstone appearances are seen in many conditions and one among this is pemphigus vulgaris so i'll come up with a new topic in uh, dentistry and more so if you have any doubts please mention it in the comment box and also if any further lectures on particular topics you would like to have that too you please uh, comment it so i'll come up with a new topic thank you